everyone. Welcome to Go Local Live. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel. Thanks for joining us this Friday afternoon here in downtown Providence. We'd like to welcome in the Providence City Council President, Sabina Matos. President Matos, thank you for coming in today. Thank you, Kate. Thank you for having me here. Well, I appreciate your taking the time to come in and talk with us about the big issue yes. currently in the City of Providence. And this, of course, is the proposed tax structure changes now unveiled just recently last week yes, by sir. yourself and uh, Council Finance Chair John Igliozzi. Yes, last right. night in the Senate, uh, we saw that it passed the Senate Housing and Municipal Government Committee. I want to talk with you a little bit, just down to the basics, yeah. about the decision to address, from your perspective, mm -hmm. restructuring the tax structure in, in, in Providence. All right. So the decision actually came from the Finance Committee. Uh, we were faced with a big challenge this year with the budget that was presented to us. Um, the budget basically was shifting a lot of the tax burden to individuals that are the less fortunate within our city, the ones that are in fixed income. When you think about someone in Social Security, elderly, those are the ones that are going to see the biggest increase, uh, um, percentage increase on their taxes. Um, we were presented with this budget and trying to figure out this doesn't seem fair because in the meantime while the individuals on fixed income low income we're going to be see a high percentage increase um, the individuals that have more resources the wealthier individuals will see uh, their taxes actually get a discount in many um, occasions it could be four thousand and more discount in their taxes so the challenge that the city council and the finance committee had is how do we balance this out a little bit better so i we know that because of the reevaluation of what happened in 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 the um, neighborhoods with less resources uh, the values went up so much we knew that there was going to be a tax increase but we were not expecting that it was going to be this big so what the city council is trying to do is to um, alleviate a little bit that tax increase that is not as hard as is projected right now based on the, um, the budget that the mayor introduced. Now we've obviously seen opposition uh, in some corners to this proposal and let's talk a little bit about the numbers now yes. that average that the Providence resident could see as a decrease that's been out there is that mm -hmm. $200 but also stated that if cuts go through as proposed by the city council, that could be even more for taxpayers as of seeing a, a, a more of a benefit, if you will. Let's talk a little bit about that. Um, obviously heard from other council members that they would like to look at other ways to slice it. But in your opinion, yep. why is this the best structure to alleviate, as you said, that tax burden on certain parts of the city? Well, right now, if you look at the proposal that we have, um, the initial proposal that the Finance Committee and Chairman Iglesi came with alleviates the, the tax increase on the individuals with uh, low income at about $200 in many occasions. Mm -hmm. And um, some of my colleagues have said $200 is not a big difference. Well, let me tell you, $200 is a big difference for someone that is in a fixed income, someone in Social Security, uh, the elderly. $200 could be uh, their um, money for their medications, could be their grocery money. Because we're talking about $200, but their taxes are already going up. It's not just $200. So that's what I find uh, unfair for people to dismiss um, and that $200 is an, is an amount that is significant amount for many people in our city. And so let's talk a little bit. The Senate committee uh, hearing last night heard from all sides yeah. of the issue. Um, let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, going through the Senate committee, uh, getting that approval, yeah. um, you know, let's talk about the vetting process. Was there anything not touched upon last night that you think that you should be bringing to viewers who are watching now? Um, obviously, lots of questions from the senators yeah. themselves, lots of testimony from opponents. Um, let's talk a little bit what you think were the key takeaways from last night. Well, from last night, first of all, I just want to take this opportunity to thank the um, Chairman Lombardo and the members of the of the committee, thank you so much for listening and paying uh, to our uh, ply by, for the people of Providence, uh, for the people that have um, don't have a voice, for people that actually they don't even know what is they're gonna be hit with until 
they get the tax bill or either they get their mortgage um, bill and they notice the mortgage go up. They have no idea how bad it's going to be yet. So I want to thank the, the finance committee uh, for um, approving this, this step for the city of Providence to give us this flexibility. From last night, I can take away this. this. Um, there were a lot of feedbacks that were given from um, the ones in support and the ones against it. Uh, we end up going uh, this road or asking for our legislation because the city uh, solicitors sent a statement saying an opinion that we needed to get enabling legislation. Um, originally, when we were talking about this, that never came up. We never, we were told that we didn't need to go and get enabling legislation until we announced our plan officially. So uh, something that came up last night during, I believe it was probably the last person or the second to last person to tes testify, Brian Bishop, he brought up something very interesting. Providence used to have two different homesteads before. We had one for owner occupied and one for no owner occupied. And we never got enabling legislation for that because based on the legislation of the state, we already have that ability. Mm. So his point was that he didn't think that we don't even need that to go to the state and get, ask for, for, for them to allow us to, to have this um, uh, tax rate a structure of two homestead. So that was very interesting that came out last night. Let's talk a little bit about next steps, of course, legislation on the House side, yeah. looking to see when potentially that might go to committee as well. But you raised that point of the role of the assembly in this process. Yeah. If in the event uh, it either does not make it to the House, through the House, um, could you envision the city council taking issue with that ruling from the city solicitor and in fact, moving forward, uh, you know, getting some legal advice, counsel, if you will, mm -hmm. saying that you believe from a legal precedent that you are in the clear to move forward with these types of changes. Yeah, so some of the council members has um, brought up the fact that the city council needs to hire, hire, hire our own attorney. And just because of what just happened right now, we were working on the, the uh, information and the impression that we didn't need a, um, to take any further steps. Uh, that was the advice that was given to us. And then once we're ready with a plan to share with everyone, we get hit with an opinion saying that now that we really have to go to the state house. So that just basically rekindled the conversation from council members mm -hmm. that, yes, maybe the city council, we need to have our own lawyers. And so let's talk a little bit as well. Last night, council chair, uh, finance chair John Igliosi mentioning reopening the process by which homeowners can appeal their most recent revaluation yes. um, uh, of their property. Um, do you anticipate um, that a lot of Providence residents might uh, decide to do this now in looking at potential uh, a, a different scenario than they envisioned before? Yeah. I'm not sure we're able to do it for this year. I wish we could, but I'm not sure this is something we can do this year. But we have, we're learning a lot from this process in, for things that we want to change moving forward. One of the proposals is besides extending the period that individuals get to uh, appeal their assessment, is also figuring out how we change the uh, city charter and the rules in order to have the mayor bring the budget to the city council earlier. Right now, we got the budget, the deadline is May 1st. We got the budget from the administration on April 30th. So we only have about two months to go through the budget, um, learn everything that is there, and come up with an alternative and recommendation. So and we're thinking that we have to move that day to earlier, maybe doing in February. Um, mm -hmm similar to what the state house does. So that way it's gonna give us really more time for us to look at the, at the budget and, and, and have more time so people don't complain about the process because this is the process. This is the timeline we have and this is, this is the process. So what have you been saying again to those opponents, again, turned out last night, turned out at city council finance, mm -hmm. uh, especially on the east side saying, could have a chilling effect, could drive people out, could prohibit people yeah. from moving in. When they raise those questions to you, how do you respond to them? So my response is that this proposal is not for the south side, for the west side, or for the east side. This is a proposal that covers the whole city. 
everybody in the city is going to be treated the, treated the same way. If you have a house that is valued up to 300000 or, or less, you're going to get one um, proposed tax, um, a proposed homestead, which right now we're proposing a 40%, right? It doesn't matter if your house is in the south side, the east side, you'll get up to $300,000. Any amount beyond $300,000, that is what you're going to get a different homestead. So, and that, it doesn't matter if your house is in the east side, the west side, or the south side. Actually, there are pretty houses around the Roger William Park that I'm pretty sure are going to be seeing the, tent, the same type of, or oh, experiencing the same thing that the houses in the east side, which is they're going to get a homestead of 40% up to $300,000, and any amount beyond $300,000, it will get a 28%. Had you anticipated this level of contention? No. I thought, that, I thought that once you explain to people why we're doing this, why um, there are people that are not going to be able to pay um, their taxes, we're going to have more people losing their houses. We're going to contribute to more houses going into um, the bought up properties. More people are going to be losing their houses through tax sale. This is what's going to happen. And people says, oh, we have to wait and do it next year. There are people that don't have that opportunity to wait until next year. They may lose their houses in the meantime. So that's why we're trying to address that right now. Anything else you'd like to share with viewers while we have you here in studio, again, in the midst of the process, after passage at the Senate Housing and Municipal Government Committee last night, now looking to the House, yeah. anything else you think viewers need to know? Well, I think I just want to call off some of my colleagues in the City Council talking about the process and unfair and last minute, 11 hour, and backdoor deals. I just think that this is just hypocrisy. Because if we go back a little bit and everybody remember what happened during redistricting, we got a new map that came out the last night before the vote. So anyone who voted for that before cannot, doesn't have the moral ground to talk about process. Well, as you said, talked about the constraints you're faced with, options moving forward, and of course where the process is currently. So Council President Sabina Matos, I appreciate your taking the time to come Thank into the studio. Thank you for the opportunity. And I appreciate your watching us here on Go Local Live. We wish you a great weekend ahead. We'll be back on Monday with Business Monday with Josh Fenton. But of course, find us on Facebook and find us on golocalprov.com all through the weekend. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel. Thank you.